This is the United States Energy Association Power Sector Podcast. I'm your host, Herman K. Trabish. I've covered the power sector since 2006, and I currently report for Utility Dive. My guest is Michael Goggin, Vice President for Power System Consultant, Grid Strategies. Michael's decades of research in transmission and clean energy optimization have made him one of the nation's foremost authorities on the power sector. He's filed expert testimony over 100 times with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC, and is doing ongoing work with the North American Electric Reliability Corporation, or NERC. In this USEA podcast number 22, we're going to talk about Michael's new paper, Billions in Benefits, which shows how improved planning of and cost sharing for interregional transmission between the two largest U.S. regional transmission organizations, or RTOs, the Mid-Continent Independent System Operator, MISO, and the PJM Interconnection, can save consumers over $15 billion in generation costs and deliver over a billion dollars per year in other benefits. Michael, the combined MISO PJM footprint from the Dakotas to the East Coast has a Midwestern border limits interregional resource sharing. Your paper reports that as decarbonization and economy-wide electrification increase the value of moving clean energy across regions, that border will add customer costs. But your paper also found proactive multi-value planning for sharing the two RTO's resources can control those costs. What is proactive multi-value planning and how does it control costs? Sure, um, that's a great question. Thanks for having me, Herman. Um, I'll start off by saying that, yes, right now there is a significant amount of congestion and inefficiency that comes out of having this seam between MISO and PJM. And that occurs in the energy market. There are just um, lower cost power is not able to reach customers. And so they have to pay more to have a higher cost, less efficient generator near them generate that power because of the difficulties in moving the power across the seam and just not having enough transmission to move that. Um, you also see a um, the regions have to buy too much power plant capacity, and that's where that $15 billion figure comes in, basically having extra power plants because each region meeting its reliability needs on its own is less efficient and requires more capacity, more power plants sitting there than if the regions were better able to share their resources. And this but if it becomes particularly sure. pronounced during events like Winter Storm Uri, Winter Storm Elliot, where the system is really being stressed and where um, many types of generators, you know, we've seen a lot of conventional generators and particularly gas generators um, experiencing correlated outages when they, the fuel supply is interrupted or they have equipment failures at the same time. Um, obviously, the weather, wind and solar um, has a similar effect where, you know, those are weather driven resources. And therefore, having geographic diversity, having this large footprint, um, allows you to kind of tap into um, different weather and different climate patterns. And you know, we saw, like for example, during Winter Storm Uri, it was extremely cold in my in Miso, um, and obviously ERCOT in, in Texas, and that's why they had the outages down there. Um, in PJM, you know, just next door to Miso, it was quite mild. And so by having that larger footprint and being able to better share resources, you can have just as much, if not more reliability and resilience with a much lower cost of having those power plants, those spare power plants sitting around. And so how do we get there? So the proactive planning, um, and you know this is needed both at the regional level to do kind of proactive transmission, proactive multi-value transmission planning. And when we say proactive, it's looking forward at expected changes in the generation mix, expected changes in load, um, you know, accounting for, you know, state requirements, utility plans, and utility goals. And um, so that's what we mean by proactive. And that's much more efficient than the kind of reactive using the generator interconnection queue of, you know, this wind or pro solar project wants to interconnect to the grid. How much is that going to cost? If you can kind of plan for the long term over, you know, hundreds of these projects that want to interconnect, you can tap into economies of scale and do it a lot more efficiently than if you're just trying to connect them, you know, either one at a time or, um, you know, kind of now the status quo is that you'll take every year you'll have a cluster study and look at, you know, dozens of them. Um, but it's much more efficient if you can plan for the long term and be, build that really high voltage, high capacity transmission that is so much more cost effective. So that's proactive. The multi-value means looking across the different benefits 
of transmission. And we can go into a lot more detail kind of, you know, in, in our study and um, the, um, the the MISO work that they've done. But um, the, the point is we want to do proactive multi-value planning at the regional level. And then we also want to do it between regions. And so MISO and PGM want to get together and do kind of on top of their regional training, transmission planning processes, their own proactive multi-value um, transmission planning for the transmission between the regions and see if they can find solutions that are more efficient and cost-effective than the um, solutions that come out of the regional process. Right. I'm really glad you mentioned proactive because we're entering an era when what has happened in the past or even what is happening this year is, is only a, fa a, a faded uh, image of what's going to happen in the future. But let me ask you this. A paper reports that MISO's pioneering multi-value planning changed transmission's accepted cost-benefit equation by showing how well-planned products, projects, offer unrecognized benefits that offset the inherently big sticker price for new transmission. What are those benefits that they're, they have gone unrecognized in the past? Why have they been missed or why are they being missed in current transmission planning? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And this is something we highlighted in our paper as well, is that an important part of this is not just looking at, you know, what's typically done is people will look at um, congestion and fuel cost savings or what um, modelers refer to as production cost savings. And, and this is a big part of the value of transmission. What, what I was explaining basically that um, if you, it allows you to access power from a cheaper power plant. Um, if you don't have enough transmission, you end up paying a more expensive power plant that's closer to you you know, typically a combustion turbine or something that's running on gas and it's a lot more costly, you're paying, um, if you have transmission, you can get that lower cost um, generation and that um, saves you money. And so that's a big part of the savings, but it's not all of it. Um, and so what MISO and others have done is they've really expanded in doing this multi-value analysis to not just look at production costs or these, you know, the fuel cost savings, um, but looking at um, the, the capital cost of generation, as I was talking about, this is tapping into that geographic diversity is extremely valuable. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, billions of dollars that um, MISO and other people have found in, in the benefits. And, you know, in our paper, we talked about in a high renewable future, it's going to be about $15 billion in benefits between MISO and PGM. Um, currently, it's about $6 billion. And so you can really see how as wind and solar resources ramp up on the power system, the value of interregional transmission is going to increase. And it's not just our analysis that found that um, you know, the DOE's congestion needs study came out and they found a massive need for both regional and interregional transmission um, across the country. But in particular, they found um, at the, uh, the MISO PGM seam, it was the largest single need um, and it ended up being a very large increase to, um, I believe, around 100 gigawatts of transfer capacity between the regions, which wow. is, is much greater than um, exists today. So, um, you know, I think everybody is kind of, you know, all the regions are going to need a lot more transmission capacity, but in particular, the MISO PGM one, the scene there is going to be extremely important. So, um, you know, for bringing on those new renewables, um, the other benefits, um, you know, some of it is accessing more cost-effective renewables. Um, particularly with wind, um, you know, the, the wind is very location specific and, you know, the best wind resources out in Western MISO are, you know, several times more productive than um, some of the resources elsewhere um, in other parts of MISO or in PJM. And so it makes a lot of sense. You can save a lot of money by getting those more productive lower cost resources. Um, MISO and others have also, you're avoiding um, some of these with the large scale proactively planned transmission, you can defer and avoid the need for some of these local transmission upgrades that are needed for reliability purposes or you know, generator retirements. You can much more efficiently meet those needs with kind of the big high voltage transmission. Um, there's um, one of the interesting things MISO quantified was when there are these local correlated outages, um, there is a risk of loss of load today as we've seen occur in um, most notably in ERCOT during URI, but it occurred in parts of the Southeast during Elliott. And a stronger transmission system reduces that risk. And they quantified that and found um, billions of dollars in, in savings there potentially as well. Um, they also looked at uh, the value of decarbonization. And this was done with the, the old um, societal cost of carbon estimate from the federal government. It just increased by a factor of four in the recent methane rule. Wow. So I think if you ran those numbers again, you would find even larger savings there. Um, and also, you know, of course, it's not just um, decarbonization. There's you know, all types of air emission 
impacts that have real costs on people and um, in the environment. So we, we those that's what MISO has done. I mean, I think there's other things you can include, like power market liquidity, making just the power system more resilient. Um, you know, there's a lot of these things that aren't typically quantified because it's challenging to do so, but these are real benefits. And I think at least we need to qualitatively recognize that, you know, because something is difficult to quantify doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And unfortunately, that's kind of the, the, the framework today. You know, I think we greatly underestimate the benefits of transmission because we don't quantify or don't account for many of these benefits. Right. Uh, and I think uh, Grid Strategies has you know, repeatedly highlighted in various forums and papers that uh, FERC is working on a, a set of benefits, and that may help uh, deal with this question of benefits across seams. But um, I want to ask you more about the studies that you mentioned. Your paper uh, talks about the need for studies and mentions that the studies could be paid for by federal fund funding and that they can recognize these values where both regions benefit and that could lead to more equitable cost allocation between the RTOs. But it's interesting, You the paper talks about why those studies are needed. The, the, MISO has done projects that shows the value of those uh, cross-seam and regional benefits, but, but apparently the sense is that getting this inter-regional inter transmission going may be a little too challenging, but more studies would be more convincing that it's worth the undertaking. Is that Am I interpreting that right? Could you talk a little bit about that? I think so. And yeah, the paper did highlight that there is a lot of funding available right now um, through the IRA and infrastructure law to to fund these, to help fund these studies. And so I think the time is right for um, applying for that funding. Um, and I think, you know, it's, it's instructive to um, look at how MISO got the multi-value projects planned. And then also more recently, the long, um, the LRTP, the long range transmission plan um, projects, because I think that is kind of the um, the model that we want to see implemented in PGM and then between the regions. And I think having studies that showed the benefits of transmission really were that was instrumental in getting MISO to a place where um, the states um, got on board with um, supporting that transmission, and then they filed that at FERC. And that's what MISO did in the in the uh, multi value projects study. They um, quantified a number of these benefits, you know, looking across mul you know, multiple benefits. Um, but they also did it um, and they studied it for a po for portfolio of transmission projects. And then they quantified the benefits in each um, zone of MISO and showed that all of the regions, all of the zones of MISO were going to see large net benefits, um, you know, two to one, for so every dollar invested, you would get at least $2 back in benefits, in some cases closer to $3 for every dollar you invested. And so wow. I think being able to demonstrate wow. to everybody across the footprint that, hey, it's in your interest, you're going to get more benefit out of this than it's costing you, I think really helped kind of grease the skids and bring the states along on board. And I think this is important because, you know, MISO is politically diverse, just like PGM is politically diverse. And, you know, MISO has some states that are very interested in developing clean energy resources because they care about climate change. Um, other states in MISO are, you know, developing clean energy resources because they want jobs. Um, other states want cheap power. Um, you know, most states want that. Um, you know, most states want more reliable power. And so I think when you look at this multi-value, uh, multiple value streams and multiple benefits that transmission brings you, it, that's really, I think, important for being able to tell that story to different audiences and different pe people who care about different things. Um, you know, there's something in, in transmission for everybody. There's something that everybody can like about transmission. It's just, and so I think you need to kind of list all those benefits and people can pick and choose the things that, you know, they care about and use that to justify um, building. And that, I think that's how MISO got this done. They got their very politically diverse states all on board with paying for this because, you know, they all want cheap power, they all want reliable power, they want jobs, and they could see those benefits to their state. And I think something similar is needed in PJM. You know, they're also politically diverse, but I think they can all agree around many of those elements and transmission provides them. And then similarly between MISO and PJM, um, you know, I think it, that's going to be, you're doing that cost allocation between regions is, is extremely challenging. Nobody's really ever done it quite, you know, succeeded in doing it. But, you know, the, the story is really compelling. There's really these lar large amount of money on the table and, you know, great consumer saving, greater reliability, resilience, again, er things that everybody should care about. And so I think being able to have a study that tells that story and explains to you know 
on an individual customer basis in this state, in this zone, you know, you're going to see this many benefits for every dollar you invest. And, you know, the, the, the numbers are really compelling. It's, you know, $3 for every benefit, you know, $3 in benefits for every dollar you invest. So I think that's a key part of telling that story and allow, you know, I think can help um, grease the skids for building the transmission we need here. Right. Um, Michael, we don't have but a couple minutes left. Um, the paper is really comprehensive and touches on a lot of important issues. But uh, in the paper, you call for uh, uh, the, pot the potential, using the potential of renewable energy zones. You also talk about taking advantage of merchant transmission developers in a re in a regional solutions, not just the incumbent utilities. And you call for improved energy market transactions. Now we could do another whole podcast on those three topics, but I wonder if you could just in this last couple of minutes, pick out a couple or one or two of those things and tell us why those were included in the paper. Yeah, so I'll start. Um, you know, I think the co-optimized generation transmission planning is, is kind of the um, gold standard. It's what MISO does where they basically will run um, kind of irrevocably able to run, okay, what's the optimal way to build out our generation? And then they'll look and say, okay, what's the optimal way to build the transmission for that? And then, oh, can we shift some of the generation around? And basically what they're trying to do is find the sweet spot to minimize total cost of generation plus transmission. And so they don't want to build, um, if you build too much transmission, that's going to drive your costs up. If you build too little transmission, you're going to end up spending more in total because you're putting your generation in uneconomic places. You're not able to capture the, the geographic diversity. Um, you, you have to overbuild your capacity as a result. And so it's about finding that sweet spot. And so you can do that through planning. I think that's kind of you know what MISO has done. I think it's what we want to see between MISO and PGM. However, there are you know private companies out there that are very smart at kind of doing this analysis and figuring out where transmission lines are needed and you know what generation areas should be connected to what loads. And, and um, so I think we want to also allow those private uh, merchant developers to propose solutions and then receive the value that their projects would provide to customers and to rate, you know, to others in the region. And so that's, I think, a key part of the, the policy solution, because right now it, um, it's very difficult to integrate those um, merchant proposals into the planning process. There's not mechanisms to fully realize and, uh, you know, provide the value to the people making those investments, um, you know, in, in terms of the, the savings they're providing to customers. And so I think that's a key part of the solution is, um, you know, you can do the planning, but I think you also want to allow the, the private sector, you know, merchant developers to come up with solutions because I think they're quite good at finding solutions as well. Um, and then the, the operational things that we don't want to ignore that, you know, this is not all about building transmission. Right now, um, there's a lot of inefficiency at the scene between MISO and PGM as there is between other RTOs. Just effective um, cost, cost effective um, transactions don't always happen. Um, the really shocking statistic is about half the time between MISO and PJM, power is flowing from the um, region with high prices to the region with low prices. And that's the opposite of what should be happening. You don't want to have you know, more expensive power Backwards. flowing to people. You want low cost power flowing to people. And so there's right. there's something, there's a lot of things with just the, um, there's um, costs that are put into the pricing algorithms. There's um, how those prices are calculated at the seam. There's a lot of inefficiencies there that result in inefficient transactions. And so we need to fix that now. Yeah. I think it can happen in parallel with building the transmission. But if we're going to have an expanded transmission ties between the regions, we really need to get that right. Otherwise, we're just not going to be efficiently utilizing that transmission. Right. And the paper documents that really well. And in terms of renewable energy zones, I, I think we all know that the, the, the landmark experience of that was the Texas CREZ, uh, competitive renewable energy zones that led to the, the whole wind boom in many ways. But we don't have time to talk about that, Michael. So I'm going to I'm going to end it here. I want to thank you very much for your insights into how new coordinated multi-value interregional transmission planning can provide enormous benefits to PJM and MISO electric cus electricity customers and other regional uh, customers as well as we think about seems in other places like those between MISO and SPP and so forth. Uh, now, as always, I want to thank our listeners for taking the time to check out the USEA Power Sector Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share with everybody you know our quest for energy transmission solutions. <laughs>